Hello, Karen, and welcome to episode 83 and also our second installment of our marathon five-part series. Oh, Katie, welcome. I am feeling a little bit like you, like I've felt at like mile 1.5 of a 5k. Yes. When I like, it's not, no, and it's not y'all I'm lying. Okay. I would say before mile marker one, where I feel awesome. Yes. Right. Like I'm feeling super strong. Right. And I'm like, oh my God, I didn't need to train for this. Oh, by the way, I didn't, I got this. <laughs> and then I realized that I haven't seen the first mile marker yet. And I'm like, oh shit. I'm feeling a little bit like that. Hello. I'm feeling the same. I'm feeling the same. I feel like, man, I had my first Gatorade of the run. I feel great. There's some really good crowd support. Like we're, we're doing this. Okay. Listeners, if you're coming in and you haven't listened to very many of our episodes yet, you might be like, what the hell are they talking about? We are in the middle of, well, we're in the beginning, I guess, of a five part marathon mini pod series. So we started it last week, every week for the next well, now four weeks, we will be doing 12 minute episodes on specific topics. And the reason for that is because I am going out of town. And so up until like through May 16th, we will be doing 12, 12 minute episodes. And we're doing this all in one sitting. There's that little detail. Friday evening afternoon for you. We are just, we are tearing through these. We're making it work. We are making it work. So, uh, here we go. I love this topic. Do you want to take it away? I love it. Thank you, as always, for being my muse. So the theme for this week is knowing when to tap out. And I have recently, I won't get into details, but I have recently faced a situation where I realized that I just needed to hit pause on something and just tap out. And I think the origins of, from my understanding of tapping out is like you're, when you're in a wrestling match, when you like want to like call it, when you want to surrender, when you want to say, okay, I give you tap. Yes. So that's you tap out. So I, 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 I tapped out voluntarily and it was very humbling, but was a thousand percent the right thing to do. That's so beautiful. How do you feel about it? Like, how do you feel about the act of tapping out in that situation? I am resigned to it. And I have gotten a lot of support around it and people have been very kind and I have gotten a lot of wisdom around it. I have to say like people just saying like, it takes a lot of courage to surrender and it takes a lot of wisdom to know when to do it and to know that it's not failure. Like failure is keeping going when you know you should stop. So yes, yes. It's been a positive experience so far. We'll see. I'm so glad it's been positive. And you're right. Like it's, there's so much strength in knowing when to tap out and to also giving, giving yourself permission to tap out. Like, thank you for being such a beautiful beacon of inspiration for this because it's hard. Like, I think that like the, the moments before you decide whether or not to tap out are like the most, at least in my experience, the most pained. Like, you're just like, at least for me, I struggle. I'm like, oh no, I need to keep going. Yes, 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 yes. I'm going to make this work. I'm going to make this work. And I have been in those situations as well, where I, the minute that I decide to tap out, it, like a lot of it has to do with work for me. So mm-hmm. I've had in my freelance life, like there have been many clients who are bad fits and pay lots of money. And so like they're, you know, they often are called PETA clients, pain in the asses. Um, and so like, I, you know, have that shorthand with a couple of my freelancer friends, but basically I've had multiple situations where, um, it's on paper. It's like the best thing ever, super prestigious publication, whatever the hell it is, you know, and everyone is an asshole. And then I'm like, oh yeah, no, I'm done. And then the minute that I decide to tap out, and even though Sometimes I don't know when the next paycheck's coming. Like there's a lot of situations that have happened in that way. The minute that I feel like I want to tap out, there's a lift. There's a, like a a emotional lift. Have you ever felt that way? Like that? Yeah, absolutely. The shift in energy of the burden of making the decision. Yes. And the, I'm the exact same way. It is, it's the anticipation of it. That's so much worse. So much worse. Yeah. I mean. I, this is, we don't have time for tangents, but just really quickly, I was so freaked out about turning 40. I was just, yeah. Oh, I was not taking it well at all. I was so freaked out. 
And my 40th birthday was awesome because I felt this euphoria. Like it's here. Like, okay, I don't have to worry about it happening. It's fucking happening. Yes. So I feel a little bit like that about the tapping out, like the the leading up to it, like you said, the leading up to it is so painful and just the release of, okay, here we go. It's like the inevitable. It's like yeah. this. And when you know you have to make a decision and even if that decision is hard or if that event is hard, the minute that you just kind of like sit back and you're like, okay, it is what it is. Like it's, man, there's so much freedom in that. Like that's, it sounds like that's what your 40th was like. Yes, there's absolutely a ton of freedom in the like, yep. Okay. Yes. And I think the, in some ways, the harder, the harder the tapping out is, the more it strikes me as the right thing to do because the easier thing to do is just to stay and just get stuck. And yeah. Today's episode of, of course, I'm not okay. The podcast is brought to you by take five. Our five episode series where we're asking each other rapid fire questions. We're on two of five. Okay, Katie, go. Okay. Your first time having your favorite food. Do you remember it? Oh God, this is so hard. (laughs) Oh my God. We wrote this and now I'm like, wait, what? I don't know. You know what pops into my head when I was a little kid? Oh, I knocked my microphone. When I was a little kid, (laughs) I loved cookies and cream ice cream I remember when it came out oh when it became a thing and I was obsessed with it and I don't I was a chubby 10 year old probably the first time I had it and it was life-changing that's amazing do you remember the brand cookies and cream who make I I mean this was at Baskin Robbins so I don't remember I only ever had it at Baskin Robbins yes oh my gosh that sounds delicious right now oh my gosh (laughs) cookies and cream ice cream probably with real Oreos I bet it was amazing oh yeah Oh, okay. So my favorite food as a kid, this is slightly embarrassing, but just true, is um, those orange slices that were not oranges. No, no, no. The candy orange slices that were covered in sugar <gasps> at the at the gas station. The brand is Sather's and you could get two bags for $1 or one bag for 52 cents. And I would... I mean, I was so addicted to these things, Karen, that I was addicted until I was probably like 27. (laughs) And I, (laughs) the crazy thing is that like, I mean, my parents know how addicted I was. I was, I mean, I would, when I wasn't hardly making any money, I would drive to the grocery or to the gas station to put a dollar in my tank so that I could spend the rest of it on orange slices. That's the level. I, I will say that that has come and gone. I can't even look at those fucking things. They're disgusting. Like, I like, yeah, I have eaten them for five lifetimes. So not exactly my favorite food anymore, but it's a memory. Thank you, favorite foods, for sponsoring this podcast. So much yes. So mm. much yes. I keep having this very serious example screaming in the back of my head, and I'm just going to say it. Like, I... It has been, let me think, it many years, almost a decade um, since I ended a close friendship that I had. <sighs> and that was like the ultimate tapping out for me. And the lead up to it was absolutely excruciating, excruciating. And for the record, I wish this person no ill will. I genuinely like w- wish them well in their life, but it didn't work for me, like to be in a friendship with them. And that's never happened and never happened since. And it was a very unique situation. So it was very, very painful. And yet I know this person's not listening, but I'm like afraid that they would be. But anyway, I will say that the minute that I did it, the minute I tapped out, Karen, Mm. I mean, it's not an understatement to say a new lease on life was created like for reals. Wow. So yeah. You talk about courage. I mean, female friendships, I, that is like the ultimate, it's just an impossible thing to do. And I do, oh. I'm just, I feel like I find it very inspiring that you were able to do it because it's, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Yeah. 
it it doesn't and it didn't and it wasn't just this other person it was also me it really was and it's not like you know it's not just you it's me like it actually was both like it was like in this situation but uh knowing when to tap out I think is also like there's something about self-trust as part of it too that like when I find that myself like I don't always all automatically know when it's time to tap out like it's not just like top of mind of like, you know, this isn't good for me. I'm going to like, I doesn't always look like that. It's not so obvious all the time. And so like, I think for me, it's like, it's more, it manifests itself in like anger about something or like weird, like feelings or like body aches or something like that. And it's like, what the fuck, why am I so pissed right now? Or like, why am I so like, not, why am I angry about something that doesn't actually translate to the, and then it's like, oh, when you do more excavation, then you're like, fuck, this is a harder decision than ever. Oh my God. I'm nodding so much. I like am knocking my headset off. Like I'm like, <laughs> Oh my God. Or like the sight of someone makes you sick to your stomach. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I totally. Don't know if you've ever been in a relationship with someone. Like I was living with someone, not Sam, but I was living with someone and I dreaded when she came home. Wow. Yes. It just got to the place where she was like, ah, like I could hear her key in the door. It was like, oh, <gasps> shit. Yeah. yeah, no, it's time to tap out y'all. <laughs> Oh right. yeah. Like, yeah. And or I would dread going home. Yeah. Ugh. Would you really? Oh yeah. gosh. I'm sorry. That's so rough. It's also hard to do the tapping out sometimes, sometimes oh, yeah. knowing when to tap out and then actually tapping out are two different things. Like they can be years later, hopefully not, but that's real. And I think, you know, <laughs> I'm about to make up a phrase like Sometimes you tap out and some sometimes other people tap you out. And I feel like that is a gift, even if it's hard at the time. True. That other true. people can see you struggling or feel the relationship struggling or just see it before you see it and tap you the fuck out. And I feel like in the moment, it might not feel like a gift, but in my experience, it has always been a gift. When it's like, no, you were right. Let's, let's call this shit. You're right. A hundred percent. Because if it's not mutually beneficial, someone is not happy. Like that's, that's so real. And yes, breakups and like that I've been fired from jobs like that. Mm -hmm. And like, I remember getting fired from being a swim lesson coordinator in college at this country club where, I mean, all jokes aside, it really was my only income. And so like, I was going to be okay. Thank God I had some savings, but still I hated it. I hated it. And then they fired me. And I was like, this is the worst day of my life. And then I was like, no, actually it's not. I kind of am glad those people are bitches. <laughs> it can really, like, if you're really honest with yourself, it's like, usually, like you say, mutually beneficial. Hmm. I mean, also it's going to be okay. Those people are bitches is the end of every great story. I mean, every great story, <laughs> tap out story of our lives is like, mm, those people are bitches. Like, yes, exactly. Yes. Better off without them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, tapping out is tough though. It's tough to know like when, when always to do it, but it does always feel better. What? Yeah. Oh wait. Okay. I want, I want to do a time check. <laughs> now okay, I'm obsessed is... with this 12 minutes. <laughs> okay. We have 51 seconds left. Um, <laughs> and what's funny listeners, if you didn't hear last episode, which happened 12 minutes ago, um, <laughs> we went over by a minute and we were like, shit, how are we ever going to make things 12 minutes? And now we're like, okay, like five minutes in, we're like, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm tapping out of this episode, Katie. Good to see you. <laughs> exactly. Oh my God. Okay. We have 26 seconds left. So, uh, yeah, well, it's been fun. This is great. <laughs> Time to tap out. <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, yeah. So now 14 seconds left. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Adios. <laughs>